This is a certified hood classic. What is your favorite pizza place, bro? I, I ain't gonna lie, my favorite pizza place probably is Emo's, bro. Emo's, Emo's Pizza in St. Louis, bro. But outside of that, I like I like Papa John's. Papa John's is probably my favorite national pizza place. But look, now I don't really eat Pizza Hut, but it says Pizza Hut hasn't been doing so well. This is the video. Failed franchises, bankruptcies, and almost Damn. no growth in revenue for the last 10 years. Damn. This is the sad reality for pizza. But at least they ain't really losing that much money. It's a hut who have had so good. many store closures that there's now a subreddit dedicated to finding former Pizza Hut restaurants. To understand oh, wow. why Pizza Hut has lost almost half of its market share over the last 20 years. You know what, matter of fact, bro, hold on. There is a fucking closed Pizza Hut. They turned it into a Pop's Chicken over here, bro. That's crazy. Is, we have to begin by asking the following question. Why was Pizza Hut so unique and successful in the first place? Right. Back in the 1990s, Pizza Hut had a reputation for having some of the craziest yet most unique and successful pizza designs, which were not only delicious, but also gave the public a reason. In 1993, Pizza Hut released the Bigfoot, a massive two feet long by one foot wide square pizza creation, with the Bigfoot accounting for 18% of total sales. Wow. There was also the cheeseburger crust pizza, the oh. hot dog crust pizza, and the cornflakes crust pizza. However, none of these were as successful as the now famous stuffed crust pizza, which achieved right. sales of 1 billion in the first year, boosting Pizza Hut's stock price by roughly 50%. Wow. Of course, this strategy led to the occasional flop, such as their controversial lasagna pizza, which was described described in a review as the worst thing I've ever eaten in my <laughs> life genuinely. But People just be talking shit like literally is the worst thing you've ever eaten in your life. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, like, I mean, it's it's a it's a more creative way of saying I don't like it, but you know what I'm saying? It's just, come on. For the most part, these experiments seem to help Pizza Hut stand out from the crowd, especially when they were served in their distinct dine-in restaurants. Oh, right. These restaurants they added a social that. element to pizza, turning it into an event as opposed to just another meal. The early memories that we all have all of right. going to dine-in at our local Pizza Hut are infinitely more memorable than the hundreds of times we've ordered takeaway from Domino's. During True. the dine-in day, Days, Pizza Hut had something that physically separated them from the competition. Nobody could offer an experience quite like Pizza Hut, providing them with unbelievable levels of success, especially in the early days. Okay. Pizza Hut had the monopoly on pizza and you paid through the nose for one. At first they had to educate the dining public with little signs saying, pizza is traditionally eaten with the fingers. For the first few years I remember that there was no takeaway, dine-in only. I remember that a family sized pizza cost around $20. Nowadays that would equate to probably $50 or more man bro when i tell you you want to order like some large pizzas and shit like that a couple of large pieces bro that shit will cost you around fifty dollars bro and that's just to feed a couple like that's a feed a couple of people like if, it, if it, like for me my father my son my uh my mom my uh you know my lady and my daughter, you know what I mean? That's gonna be a lot of money for like pieces, bro. And don't don't order a drink and be damned if you ask for some uh marinara sauce or you ask for some uh uh parmesan cheese and shit. Fifty cents. 50 cents for a pizza yeah, people paid it because they were experiencing this delicious food for the first time the pizza hut dining experience was seemingly profitable in the beginning but this didn't mean that it was going to be successful forever some right. insane anecdotes claim that a new source destroyed pizza hut dining completely or that dining was destroyed by their staff choices however the main issue seemed to come from other competing pizza brands who were specializing in delivery there's something about right. pizza that makes it perfect for eating at home the box acts as a plate, there's no cutlery needed, and the compact design of pizza reduces the potential for mess. I don't use the box as no damn plate. I don't need no plate to eat pizza. Oh, but you use it as a plate. You're right. Okay, you're right. My bad, my bad. I apologize. Because when you open the lid and you just reach in, you don't have to do anything else with that. You're right. You're right. You're right. Domino's you're began right. to take advantage of this at a time when Pizza Hut didn't even offer delivery. In fact, Pizza Hut only began delivering pizzas 27 years after launching their business, doing so because they saw how successful Domino's was. The convenience of delivery meant that you didn't uh, need to go to a dine-in restaurant if you wanted to eat pizza. And if you did 
desperately want all you can eat Pizza Hut, you could literally just go to any all you can eat restaurant offering pizza and eat your eight slices along with a hundred other food options. Pizza was no longer an exclusive thing in the same way that it was in the early days of Pizza Hut. This lack of exclusivity in combination with delivery also shifted people's perceptions of how prestigious pizza was. As mentioned earlier, Pizza Hut adopted the dine-in model when pizza was an exclusive new dish from Italy. However, Domino's and delivery in general turned pizza into just another fast food. Pizza Hut became no fancier than McDonald's or KFC, so why would you take your family to eat there as a special occasion? I then there was Pizza Hut's increased pricing and decreased quality. Overnight, the price- But a lot of things did that, bro. A lot of, like, a lot of, even, like, uh, what's those, uh, look like the, the little Debbie brownies and shit, bro. Back in the day, the Libby, the, the little, De I said Libby, Le the Libby, the little Debbie brownies used to be the hidden. They used to be smacking, especially the cosmic. Then some, somewhere along the line, switching up materials, switching up ingredients. They fucked it up, raised the price, made the shit smaller, bro. I mean, I don't eat it. I really don't eat it at all, but I'm just saying everything follows suit with that bro everything got the portions got smaller the price increased and the quality was added price went up from 649 to 849 the high school students previously a common sight disappeared with right. fewer people the quality suffered pizza was always more expensive than the alternatives affordable only when getting second third fourth pizzas at a reduced price but it got more expensive the pizza remained very greasy and people started eating low carb there are better alternatives oh. especially for that money. Pizza Hut CFO David Gibbs made the claim that having dine-in restaurants is now a negative for the business, stating yeah. the challenge Pizza Hut faces is that it has a large dine-in business. Dine-in is waning in relevance. In yes. other words, Pizza Hut needs to focus less on dine-in and more on what people want. What do you think? Like, just like CC's Pizza, that shit did not work that well, bro. That shit went out of business the same year it opened in, in oh, I'm talking about in St. Louis, brother. We only had a few that shit went right out of business in St. Louis. They were, we were like, we we went there, we had a few pieces, I had a slice of that brownie, I was like, fuck this shit. Which is to take their pizza fuck. with them. This was also highlighted by Artie Stars, the president of Pizza Hut USA, who stated the biggest problem that Pizza Hut is facing is perception, explaining that many of its customers don't associate Pizza Hut with delivery. Stars said the facade of its locations reinforces this idea and it isn't helping it. to lure in diners. When you drive by the location, it doesn't scream, we deliver. To promote delivery to its customers, Pizza Hut delivered pizza to Space, the Oscars, and the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, oh, okay. but it's still seems as though they aren't competitive on delivery and on the topic of Pizza Hut in comparison to its competition we should also highlight that Pizza Hut is extremely uncompetitive from a health perspective their oh, standard sure. pepperoni pizza contains a whopping 8,153 kilojoules equal to almost 2,000 calories which is close to the entire recommended daily adult calorie intake and has almost twice as many calories as Domino's pepperoni pizza which has 4,453 kilojoules or a little over a thousand calories but it's 2,000 fucking calories, bro. 2,000 calories, bro. You're eating your daily recommended calories on there. It must have a lot of sugar in it, bro. Because I've just not seen bread, sauce, and pepperoni for the most part to cost um, to have that many calories, bro. That's crazy, bro. So that way, if you eat like a couple of pieces, or if you eat one pizza, then you ate other stuff during the day, like McDonald's and all this other shit. No wonder people were getting so fucking fat, bro. At this point, unless That's we see the crazy. size and quality of each pizza. So we ordered a pepperoni from Domino's before doing the same with the nearby Pizza Hut in order to compare the two different pizzas. As mentioned, the Domino's pepperoni came in at 1,064 calories, while the Pizza Hut pepperoni came in at 1,000. 948 calories. And with the Pizza Hut pepperoni costing double the price of the Domino's pepperoni, you might expect that the Pizza Hut pizza would be double the size. However, as you can tell from the opening, this isn't the case whatsoever. Sorry. The Domino's pizza had a surface area of 510 square centimeters, while the Pizza Hut pizza had a surface area only 12% larger at 572 square centimeters. Additionally, the Pizza Hut pepperoni weighed in at 1.46 pounds, making it only 7% heavier than the Domino's pizza at 1.36 pounds. It's now, to Pizza Hut's credit, their pizza definitely presented and subjectively even tasted better than Domino's. However, with the Pizza Hut pepperoni being double... 
But nobody would know that, know that because nobody fucking really goes. You get what I'm saying? It's like you wouldn't even know. Double the price and double the calories with no real distinct advantage, it becomes obvious as to why Pizza Hut has become uncompetitive. When looking at Pizza Hut's menu, you'll also notice that the days of Pizza Hut trying wacky unconventional designs are certainly long gone. The only crazy product that they have on their website is a range of pizzas which use a chicken schnitzel as the base. But apart from that, almost everything else on the menu feels like something you could get from Domino's yeah. At they don't have price. enough money to, Nowadays, to there's so it. many restaurants, not just dedicated pizzerias, that offer pizza on their menu that you can simply get better quality food at discounted low prices at other places. It's not even worth using Pizza Hut for pizza anymore. You'll get better results elsewhere. Now yeah, you probably get, you probably save more money just buying DiGiorno and making that shit at home. To Pizza Hut's credit, they did try to overhaul the menu back in 2014 when they introduced their biggest brand evolution ever called Flavor of Now, which introduced countless different new fancier menu items and was described as the biggest change the Pizza Hut and the pizza category has ever seen. Well, However, that, their new upscale approach had minimal impact on Pizza Hut's revenue, which actually declined by 100 million in the same year that they implemented Flavor of Now, which becomes even worse if you consider that during the same time period, period, Domino sales grew from 10 billion to 15.8 billion. Damn. And if we instead look at older data, we can see that the average oh, older data. sales Looking per store has boy. barely changed since 2006, here. which You're is about British. the point where the dine-in model died. While a consistent 12 billion per year over the last 10 years still seems like a pretty awesome scenario, the growth experienced by competing pizza brands has led Pizza Hut's market share to decrease from 25% in 1995 oh, to 14.3% in 2016. Yeah, 16 also marked the year where Pizza Hut lost their 45 year long title of the world's largest pizza brand to Domino's. However, their stagnant revenue has caused significantly worse problems than simply losing some arbitrary title. And man, and here's another thing, bro. When I go to Domino's, you know what I think about when I go to Domino's? I think about, hmm, I can get two, I can get a, I can get the two pieces for, for $5.99. That's what I think. When I think of going to Domino's, I can get two decent pieces for $5.99. They're medium pieces. I can get two of them. So I can get one of them with pepperoni. I get the other one with bacon or whatever. It don't matter, whatever. I'm just saying I can get two pieces. Then they be having sandwiches. The chicken bacon ranch sandwich undefeated 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 or when i go to papa john's i know that they're gonna put a pepper inside do you get what i'm saying here when i think of when i think of a uh, pizza hut you know what i think of me almost shitting on myself in the classroom that's what i think of i think of me almost letting out a fat turd in the classroom idol for example in august 2019 pizza hut announced that they plan on shutting down over 500 underperforming stores in the u.s and exactly one year after that in august 2020, Pizza Hut's largest franchiser, MPC, announced that they were bankrupt, having roughly a billion dollars in debt, forcing them to close 300 of their Pizza Hut franchises and put their remaining 927 stores up for sale, representing one fifth of every Pizza Hut restaurant in America. One month after this, Pizza Hut announced that they'd be closing more than 10% of its stores in the UK, with this taking place in the very same year that Domino's and Papa John's had net gains of 17.6% and 15.9%. Respectively. In the bro. process, Pizza Hut was undergoing a logo change, although not to something fresh representing a bright future, but rather to the same logo used during the Pizza Hut glory days of 1974 to 1999. Pizza Hut's chief brand officer, Mar- That's not it, bro. You can't just keep going backwards, bro. You have to go forward, bro. You have to rebrand. Like, you, you what I would have done, I would have closed those stores. <clears throat> Take all that money that you're saving from closing that store and then start a whole media campaign online, social media, bro, with people comparing pizzas and shit. Get some new shit. Get some new taste testers. Get some new analysts. Make sure the pizza is fire, bro. Make sure that shit is fire. Cut down on the calories, right, man? Hopefully they see this shit. Cut down on the fucking calories, bro. And then push the rebrand. Like, hey, look. Domino's doing pizzas for five dollars, bro. We doing pizzas for five dollars. You know what I'm saying? You get a toy with it. I don't know, bro. Something, bro. You need a gimmick. You need something, bro. Not going back to that old ass bullshit, bro. I I can't even tell you where. 
I might be able to tell you where a Pizza Hut is, but I'm not going there. Brianne Radley stated embracing Call our iconic me if Pizza Hut help. logo is recognition of a time period where Pizza Hut unequivocally reigns supreme because that's where the future is headed. However, at the same time, it feels as though they're desperate to remind the world that Pizza Hut still exists, and this doesn't sound like the kind of play made by a company who's going to be reigning supreme anytime in the near future. Nah, I agree, bro. I agree, bro. Sometimes, man, you, you just can't go back to what used to work because the world is different. Like, America is different. There was no social media back then. There was no, like, like, like the, the modern family back then was doing different things. Like, they were more connected. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Nowadays, bro, you go, it don't matter what house you go into. People aren't really, wash up for supper. Like, a lot of people aren't washing up for supper. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? That, that phrase is old, bro. Wash up for some supper. That shit is old, bro. It's so uh, I'm saying everything is about right now, right now, right now. Know what Pizza Hut needs to do? They need to rebrand they sell. They need to remarket they sell. They need to hook up with DoorDash to say like, hey, look, you get a discount at, at Pizza Hut if you use this shit at Pizza Hut. If, you had, if you're somewhere in the vicinity, if you use DoorDash, you get a discount. Have DoorDash promote that shit to some people. And you got to make sure you fire. Get the right people in there. Get the right analysts in there. Make sure the soft is good make sure the cheese is good make sure the i mean you can't really fuck up with toppings bro they're fucking toppings bro it's just a lot of things that they could do but the problem is just like the whole country of japan it's got a lot of old people bro they got a lot of old people who want to go back to the glory days you need some new fresh blood in there to make some good changes and listen to them